Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. When you first saw Robo Master S1, you must have been attracted by its four special wheels. These wheels are called Magnum wheels. So in today's video, we are going to learn about the mechanics of these Magnum wheels. And then, we are going to learn the principle behind the online directional movement of S1. And in the end, we're going to do some programming to realize some special movement of S1. First thing first, we need to know what the magnum wheel is. A magnum wheel has a hub with some rollers on its surface. So if this is the hub, and here are one of the rollers, you may notice that the angle between the roller and the hub is 45 degrees. The magnum wheel can rotate either forward or backward. During the rotation, the contact between the rollers and the ground surface can cause friction force, which is opposite to the direction of axis of rollers. So the friction force acting on the wheel is in the direction of 45 degrees along the roller. Rollmaster S1 has four magnum wheels, and they must be installed in a certain way. Uh, if we look from the top of S1, we can actually abstract S1 into four wheels. And let's just see. And here are the rollers of each wheel. And you may notice that um, the axis of each roller is pointing to the geometrical center of chassis. And it forms an ax after being connected. So how do Roadmaster S1 use these four magnum wheels to realize online directional movement? So before we're doing some analysis, uh, we need to know what the online directional movement is. So it basically means our S1 can not only move forward, backward, to right or to left, but also move obliquely and even rotate around its geometric center. Now you may wonder how it is done. Actually, it is super easy. All we need to do is to do some very simple force analysis on each wheel when S1 is in different kinds of motion. Here, I will take moving in right direction and moving forward as two cases. And in the following analysis, I will use blue to represent um, right and use yellow to represent moving forward. Then we need to decompose the frictional force into horizontal and vertical direction. And here we need a two-dimension coordinate system. X to represent horizontal direction and Y to represent vertical direction. Thus we have component forces of this FR, and that is F R X and F R Y. And we can do the similar analysis on the other three frictional force. Okay, now we have eight component forces here. And what we need to do is to find the net force on x-axis and y-axis respectively. Now let's take a look at the net force on y direction first. Um, you may notice that this pair of forces on y direction, they have same magnitude but in opposite directions. That's why they can be canceled with each other. And we can do the same thing for this pair of forces on y direction as well. Thus, there is no force at all on y direction. So the net force here is zero. And for net force on x axis, let me say that We have four component forces uh, with same magnitude in same direction. That's why we have four FRX 
as our net force on the x-axis. Then we can combine these two net force to derive the overall net force. That is net force equals to F and S plus F and Y that is equal to 4 R X, which means the overall net force is pointing to right. And that explains why our S1 can move in right direction. Now let's take a look at the case that S1 is moving forward. Um, we can actually use the same procedure as we did in the previous case. Uh, the first step is to find the frictional force on each wheel, and that is F, F. I mean, the capital F stands for the um, forward. The second step is to find the component forces on each friction force. The third step is to find the net force on x-axis and y-axis respectively. Um, So on x-axis, you can actually see that this pair of forces can be cancelled with each other. And it's the same for this pair of forces. The reason why they can be cancelled with each other is that um, they have, you know, same magnitude but in opposite directions. And for the component forces on uh, y direction, you can see that they have um, same magnitude in, and same um, direction because they're all pointing forward. So the net force on x-axis is zero and the net force on y-axis is four F, F, Y. So if that is F, F, Y and that is F, F. So now we have net force on x-axis and y-axis respectively, and thus we can have an overall net force equals to F and x plus F and y equals to four F, F, y. And that explains why our S1 can move forward, because there's no net force on x-axis at all, and we have four F, F, y, on y-axis to drive the S1 to move forward. Great, I believe you may already know how to control S1 to move forward, backward, slide right and left. Now let's find out how to um, make S1 to move obliquely at a certain angle. For example, if we want S1 to move obliquely with the velocity v at an angle of theta, to solve this problem and to realize this kind of motion, we need to find the rotational speed of each wheel. That is omega 1, omega 2, omega 3, and omega 4. And by the way, this is a view from the top of the S1. Now, the first step is to decompose this overall velocity into x axis and y axis, respectively. This is Vx, and this is Vy. So by very simple trigonometry, you can find that Vx equals to V times sine theta, and the component force on y-axis equals to V times cosine theta. Now what I'm going to do is define these four unknowns with these two known values. And we can write down the formula. Omega 1 equals to Vx plus Vy. Omega 2 equals to Vx 
minus by. In three equals to bx by by. And four equals to bx minus by. If you want to know how to derive this formula, you can find out the derivation in our advanced video about the magnet wheels. Now it's time to do some programming. For your convenience, we have encapsulated above mentioned formulae as an API, and you can view all blocks related to the chassis. These blocks can be used to set the real-time status and motion of the chassis. Users can also easily obtain data from the sensors installed on the chassis. In the app, we can program the robot to move at any angle simply by dragging out blocks to build correct formulae. For example, now we want S1 to move at an angle of 30 degrees with 200 RPM. So if we change the angle at which S1 moves, how it will move? Let's have a try. We only need to increase the angle variable by fixed value in the program. When running the program, we will be surprised to find that Robomaster S1 is making a circle through translation. Great, we've done the programming part as well. Now let me do a very quick recap of today's lesson. Uh, in the first place, we learn what the magnum wheel is. Then, we study on the online directional movement of S1 by doing some force analysis and velocity analysis. And in the end, we use some programming modules in the app to realize some very interesting projects. This is the end of today's lesson. And in the advanced lesson of magnum wheel, I'm going to show you how to deduce the rotational speed of each wheel for this problem. I'll see you next time. Bye.